Over the Memorial Day weekend, SpaceX initiated an overnight launch from Cape Canaveral, successfully deploying a communications satellite weighing nearly five tons into orbit. The satellite belongs to Arabsat, a multinational consortium that offers TV and video broadcast services across the Middle East. Initially, SpaceX's launch attempt on Wednesday was postponed due to thick cloud cover. The Falcon 9 rocket's liftoff was rescheduled later in the week to await improved weather conditions and to accommodate the test firing of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket at a nearby launch pad. However, ULA ultimately delayed the test firing of their Vulcan rocket. Subsequently, SpaceX received approval from the Space Force's Eastern Range for another countdown on Friday. After a delay of over an hour to allow winds to settle, the Falcon 9 rocket was fueled and prepared for liftoff at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 0430 UTC, on Saturday. Navigating through patches of low-level clouds, the Falcon 9 rocket embarked on an eastward trajectory from Cape Canaveral. Approximately half an hour after liftoff, it successfully placed the Badger 8 satellite into an elliptical, supersynchronous, transfer orbit. According to telemetry data displayed on SpaceX's live webcast, the rocket propelled the spacecraft to a maximum speed of 21,999 miles per hour, 35,405 kilometers per hour. The recent launch marked SpaceX's 36th flight of the year and the 26th orbital launch attempt in 2023 from Florida's Space Coast. On Saturday, the Falcon 9 rocket carried the Badger 8 communications satellite, weighing nearly 10,000 pounds, 4.5 metric tons, securely enclosed within its nose cone. The satellite, also known as Arabsat 7B, was manufactured by Airbus Defense and Space. It is designed to provide C-band and Ku-band communication services, taking over the capabilities currently offered by the aging Badger 6 satellite, which has been in geostationary orbit for 15 years. Badger 8 will be positioned in the same orbital slot as Badger 6, situated at 26 degrees east longitude along the equator. These Badger satellites are owned by Arabsat, a consortium of 21 member states from the Arab region, headquartered in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The primary function of Badger 8 will be to deliver television broadcast services, video relay, and data services across the Middle East, North Africa, Europe, and Central Asia. According to Arabsat, their investment in the Badger 8 program amounts to approximately $300 million, encompassing the spacecraft manufacturing contract with Airbus, the launch agreement with SpaceX, insurance coverage, and the necessary ground infrastructure. Badger 8 is built on Airbus's latest large spacecraft bus called Eurostar Neo. Following its separation from the Falcon 9 rocket approximately 37 minutes into the mission, Badger 8 was anticipated to deploy its solar panels and undergo a series of post-launch checkouts overseen by Airbus ground controllers in Toulouse, France. Subsequently, Badger 8 will utilize low-thrust, high-efficiency plasma thrusters to maneuver itself into a circular geostationary orbit positioned over the equator at a distance exceeding 22,000 miles, nearly 36,000 kilometers, from Earth. This orbit will enable the spacecraft to synchronize its movement with the rotation of the Earth, providing continuous coverage across its designated zone, spanning from Europe to the Middle East and into Central Asia. The process of adjusting the orbit is expected to take several months. Following the orbital maneuvers, Badger 8 will undergo in-orbit testing and is anticipated to enter operational service for Arabsat later this year. The spacecraft is designed to function for a duration of 15 years.
In addition to its primary role as a commercial communications satellite, Badger 8 carries an experimental laser communications payload developed by Airbus. This payload, known as Telio, serves as a demonstration to test innovative optical communications technology in collaboration with the French space agency NIS and Safran Data Systems. Telio's primary objective is to assess the capability of transmitting data from the satellite to a ground station using laser beams, enabling information transfer at speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. Airbus and its partners aspire to advance this technology further, aiming for a future achievement of a remarkable data rate of 1 terabit per second through optical communications. In a press release, Airbus stated, This Telio demonstrator will also facilitate high-capacity optical feeder link communications, which are inherently resilient against jamming. It is part of Airbus' development of a new generation of optical communications technology for space. The inclusion of the Telio payload on Badger 8 signifies a significant step towards the advancement of optical communications technology, opening doors to enhanced capabilities and robustness for future space missions. The launch of Badger 8 added to the busy schedule of SpaceX missions, marking the fourth Falcon 9 launch in just over a week. Preceding the Badger 8 mission were a Falcon 9 flight carrying Starlink satellites from Cape Canaveral on May 19, a Falcon 9 launch from California on May 20, delivering payloads for OneWeb and Iridium, and the launch of Axiom Space's AX-2 private astronaut mission from Kennedy Space Center on May 21. Engineers stationed at SpaceX's Launch and Landing Control Center, located south of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, oversaw the late-night countdown leading up to the liftoff of the Badger 8 mission early Saturday. In the final 35 minutes before liftoff, the Falcon 9 rocket was loaded with a million pounds of kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants. Following the verification of technical and weather conditions, which were all favorable for launch, the nine Merlin 1D main engines on the first stage booster ignited using an ignition fluid called triethyl aluminum slash triethylborane, TATB. With the engines reaching full throttle, hydraulic clamps released, allowing the Falcon 9 to ascend into space. The nine main engines generated a remarkable 1.7 million pounds of thrust for over two and a half minutes, propelling the Falcon 9 and Badger 8 into the upper atmosphere. Subsequently, the booster stage shut down and separated from the Falcon 9's upper stage. It initiated a controlled descent towards SpaceX's drone ship named Just Read the Instructions, stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. The booster, known as B-1062, deployed its titanium hypersonic grid fins and utilized cold gas nitrogen thrusters to maintain its orientation. During re-entry, it reignited three of its nine main engines for a braking maneuver lasting nearly 30 seconds. To slow down for landing, the rocket executed a final burn with the center engine, ultimately touching down on the drone ship approximately eight and a half minutes into the mission. In the Atlantic Ocean, a SpaceX recovery ship was stationed to retrieve the Falcon 9 rocket's payload fairing. The fairing consists of two clamshell halves that parachute into the sea. Around three and a half minutes into the flight, the payload fairing separated from the rocket, coinciding with the ignition of the Falcon 9's upper stage engine. The Falcon 9's upper stage engine fired twice to insert the Badger 8 spacecraft into an elliptical supersynchronous transfer orbit. Confirmation of the separation between Badger 8 and the Falcon 9's upper stage occurred at T plus plus 37 minutes and 13 seconds, signifying a successful deployment of the satellite.